Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 59. This is a topic that is one of the central topics of Algebra 1, talking about lines and talking about systems of equations, which are actually, those two topics are related, but if you think of them separately, those two topics are at the very heart of what Algebra 1 is all about, and today we're gonna to talk about substitution. So you know it's important, you know it's good stuff. We have been talking about substitution. It's a way to solve something that we call a system of equations. I'm gonna remind you of what that looks like. One of the fabulous things about the Saxon curriculum is that we do not just tackle one topic and beat it to death and then move on to another one. We interweave them all, right? They're all interwoven. We do one topic, then we do another, then we do a third, and then maybe we cycle back to the first, right? They're all interwoven and we, we cycle around them. That's very intentional on John's part. That's one of the reasons I love him. Um, and that's also, it makes it very important for me to always review at the beginning of a lesson what we already know, because we may not have talked about it for a few days. So what I'm doing now is reminding you of what we already know. This is called a system of equations. We know that it's that because it has this bracket on it. As soon as we see that, we automatically go, oh, this is what we call a system of equations. What that means is that they're related to each other. And the values that we pick for X and for Y have to make both of them come true. That's no small order because this looks very different than this, right? But there is at least one pair of X's and Y's, and later we're gonna discuss the exceptions to this rule. Not today, but eventually we will. There are a few very small exceptions, but for the most part, we're gonna find one X and one Y that makes both of these come true. The technique that we've been using to do that is called substitution. There are other techniques. There are five of them. There's five ways to solve a system of equations. One, two, three, four, Five. The first one is substitution. I will issue no spoilers, except to say we'll learn this one, and I think this one too, this year, and then these two we will save for advanced mathematics, which is the green book um, that's kind of like Algebra 3, only it's not Algebra, it's moving on to other more sophisticated topics. So, uh, we will be getting more over the years, but substitution is the first and one of the most wonderful. Okay, now, one of the things we know about substitution is that the way it works is you look for the one variable that's set by itself and then is equal to something else, and we go, oh, okay, so we find, that's x, so then we find the x in the other equation, and we take this, because it's equal to x, and we plug that in right there right? We set up parentheses and then we make one big equation and then solve it for x and then for y. Okay, that's really cool. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to deal with situations where John does not hand us this perfect equation like this that's all set up and ready to go for substitution. We're going to have to do a little rearranging before we can substitute. I will point out that this is another one of those lessons where the new part comes at the very beginning. Once we learn about rearranging, everything else will be exactly the same. So we don't have to worry about changing our, you know, our world's not turning upside down. We're just having to do one more step in the beginning. Uh, that's all I want to say. Let's do a problem. I'm in a squeaky chair. I really need to rearrange these chairs. So I'm not, because I always sit in the same place. So I just need to get this squeaky dude moved to another place. I don't always sit in the same place, but I like to sit by the window if it's the daytime. Um, here's our system of equations. And I'm copying, I'm looking to make sure I copied it correctly while you copy. 
again, this parenthesis or brackety thing, whatever you want to call that, at the front end is very important. That's what screams in our ears. Oh, this is a system of equations. Hello. It doesn't say that. Um, okay. So what we do is we look at this and we go, oh, we want to substitute. We want to find X equals or Y equals, and we want to plug it into the other one. And we look at this and go, mm, John did not set it up perfectly for us. He's not babying us anymore. We get to do our own rearranging. Now, how do you know how to rearrange? You look for the plain letter. This is English, not Mathese. So I'm not talking about alphanumeric variables or anything ridiculous like that. Just look for the plain letter. It's right here, right? There's no numbers in front of it. There's no minus signs in front of it. It's just the plain letter. And then, thinking of the easiest way to say that. We have to get that letter on one side of the equal sign by itself. I'm not going to overwrite that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x minus 2y equals minus 1, and we're going to get it by itself. So we'll add 2y to both sides. x equals, I like to put this first. I like to put the other letter first. I also like to tuck the minus sign in between, if at all possible. Look, we rearranged, and now we're ready to substitute, right? So this is our new, what we often do in these problems, and John will do it more later, we give them names so we can talk about them. We rearranged equation A so that it's ready for substitute. Now we'll bring down equation B, creating parentheses where the X is, and then we'll fill in that. 2 minus 3Y equals 4, okay? Um, and then this is 2y minus 1. From here on out, it's exactly the same. There's no change. This is the interesting part where we're going to look for the plain letter and then we're going to rearrange to get it by itself. Okay, but we'll keep going. Remember now, almost always in these substitution problems, one of our first steps is to distribute, right, once we get our equation set up, because we almost always have this scenario. 4y minus 2 minus 3y equals 4. All right, the y's are together here, so let's add 2 to both sides. And then we'll combine like terms. And I love when this happens because 4y minus 3y is just plain y, which means we're not going to have to do any dividing to solve this, right? It just kind of simplifies for us. y equals 6. Fabulous. And now we choose, we can choose either A, or we can choose B, or we can choose what I would call our new A. It's just rearranged, right? But we can use this one as well to plug into. Any single one of these equations will work just fine. As long as we haven't made any mistakes in our math, of course. But we can use any form of the equation that we like. I like this one because we're trying to solve for x, so I'll put the y in there, and it'll be simple to, to um, calculate the answer, right? So I'm using the new a, and I say x equals 2 times 6, because 6 is y, and there's the 2y minus 1. That is x equals 12 minus 1, which equals 11, so I've got y equals 6, and I'll put the x here again just so I am super clear. And then I write this as a pair of ordered points, 11, 6. That's the way I write my final answer. We've talked about that. The reason why this is important is to remind us that what we really have here are two lines. What? We could, we could graph both of these as y equals mx plus b. We're not going to right now, but we could. We could graph these as lines, and our solution, our values for x and y that make both of these come true, 
That would be the place where they intersect. What in the actual world am I talking about? Pretend those are the two lines and we graph them. I'm not gonna draw the Cartesian coordinate system underneath. This point would be the place where they intersect. Come on, how cool is that, right? So if you're a visual person, which you know I am, this helps me make sense of what we're doing with substitution. These are actually two lines and we're trying to find the place where they intersect. We don't have to graph them, spoilers, yet, but we do want to keep in mind that's what we're doing. A line and a line, let's find the place where they cross. That will be a point that we can call X, Y. And that's why we write the answer like this is to remind ourselves that what we've actually found are not just random values, but we have found a point where the two lines intersect. Come on, I love that. I think that's so cool. Okay, let's do another one. Unless, you know, you need to pause maybe to go do a few cartwheels because you think this is so fun. It's fine, I'm, I'm okay with that. There are five, um, three examples in this lesson, my favorite number, 59.2. Use substitution to solve for x and y. Okay, that's what we always do, we're fine. Um, so I copy, and I do recommend that you always write these down because we wanna look at them and make changes to them. And John does have the A and B thing going here, so that helps us just talk about them. And I'll let, give you a second to finish copying. Okay, so our rule is to look for a letter that's by itself, right? No numbers in front of it, no minus signs in front of it. And as we look at this, we go, oh, we don't have one. We don't have one. So if that's the case, we will take a minus sign over a number, okay? So that's gonna be my little takeaway for this problem. Take a minus sign over a number. Numbers are much harder to deal with. We'll deal with them eventually next year. But for now, we'll say, okay, we'll put up with this minus sign because it does, this Y does not have a number. All the others have numbers, so forget it. We'll take the minus sign and we'll deal with it. So now, I'm gonna move this one down. You wouldn't necessarily have to do this if you were writing it. You can make notes up here. Um, and I'll do that eventually. Now what we see is, okay, we want this Y to be positive. So let's do this. Let's bump him over here and let's bump the 10 over that way, right? So we'll add Y to both sides and we'll subtract this 10. That will make the minus sign go away. It takes a few more steps, but it's not the end of the world. 2X minus 10 equals Y. All right, we can leave it like that, but if this bugs you, and it kind of bugs me, we can write it the other way, y equals 2x minus 10, right? The order doesn't matter, as long as this is an equal sign. If it was an inequality, there'd be drama, but we can, we can do that anytime we want. Now we've got a nice, happy plug-in, and now we look to equation B and go, oh, look, that's where it belongs. So let's, I'm gonna write this. This is our new A and then we'll bring down our B. This is just to help you keep track of what I'm doing. Um, 4X minus three, and there's the quantity, equals 16. And then this is supposed to be Y, Y, 2X minus 10. Uh, students occasionally ask me, how do I know whether I'm supposed to solve for X first or Y first? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So what, you're, what we're doing in, in the early stages of the problem is we're just looking for whichever letter is presenting itself as the best candidate, right? The X's both have numbers in front of them. No thank you, I don't want those. Um, ditto for this guy. So we just pick, we're just being opportunistic. We're just working with whatever's easier. We don't have any grand strategy saying, oh, we're always gonna solve for X first or Y first. It doesn't matter and we just, go with the flow and do whatever's easiest and trust that it will all work out. And if you're doing your math correctly, it will. It'll all work out, so you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, there's no grand strategy. 
other than to just pick the letter that is either by itself or like I said, we'll take a minus sign over a number. That's what we're looking for. Okay, and then we plug in accordingly. Now we're just following the process, right? But there's no grand design, there's no strategy that I have about this time I'll do an X, this time I'll do a Y. I just look and see how the problem presents itself and I roll with it. Okay, distributing time. 4X minus 6X, remember we have to distribute the minus sign as well as the three, so this will become plus 30 equals 16. Are you ready? These two are together. Let's live dangerously. Let's live with the negative numbers. We'll add these like terms, and then we'll subtract the 30 from both sides. Minus 2x equals minus 14. That's not that terrible, is it? X equals seven. And because I don't wanna flip a page, I'm gonna create a little box here where I can solve for Y. And we've got a beautiful equation right here. Remember, it's okay to use my new A or my old A or my B. Any one of them, I can plug in X equals seven and it will give me the right answer for Y. That's the whole strategy of this. So I choose the one that I think is gonna make it easiest and I think this one will. So I write Y equals two times seven, because that's what that value is. Uh, where am I? Minus 10. All right, that is two, or I'm sorry, Y equals 14 minus 10. So y equals four. And so my final answer to this problem, I will write up here at the top. I write it in as an ordered pair because I know that these actually represent lines and these answers for x and y represent the point where they cross. It's seven, four. John is usually extremely kind to us with these substitution problems and he gives us nice, neat, even answers. Um, until we get much further down the road, we're not gonna have to worry about fractions or anything weird happening. He makes them come out beautiful and cute. Did I smiley face this one? No, I did not. It's right though. Okay, ready? We'll do one more and then we shall be done. Example 59.3. Ready? Use substitution to solve for X and Y. Same instructions as always. 4x. Again, I want you to copy down the system onto your page, just like I'm doing. This one I'll do as I would expect you to do for homework. And I am quite picky. You know I want you to do it exactly as I'm doing it. Okay? You don't necessarily have to put the A and B if you don't want to because it's only your brain. You're not trying to follow my brain now. Okay, so you look at this. You go, okay, I'm looking for a letter by itself, preferably no minus sign, definitely no numbers. There she blows. So now we need to rearrange this. So I'm just going to make notes right here. I'm not going to recopy it. And I'll get y equals, I just like the x first, minus 2x plus 25. Now I'm ready to substitute in, so I go and look at the other one, and it's 4x minus 2, and this is set up for y, minus 2x plus 25, and I'm up here, equals 38. Okay? There we have it. We rearranged and we substituted and now we're ready to solve. I'm circling this because I want to make sure I remember that minus sign. So I'll do 4x plus 4x minus 50 equals 38. Hmm. Interesting, right? 
Okay, we'll combine like terms and we'll add this 50 to both sides. We'll swim the plain number over toward the right and we'll keep the X fish on the left. 8X, that goes away, so I'm gonna write this closer so I see them together, equals 80A, ooh la la. Divide by eight to isolate the X, right? That's our goal. We're trying to get the X by itself. Remember, that's always the goal. And we get X equals 11. What I like to do is wiggle that. That's part of my answer, and I'm gonna need that, so I put this mark underneath to help me find it again. My eyes land on it quickly. Okay, now we need to solve for y. We can use this or this or this new thing we created. I'm going with this. y equals minus 2 times x, which is 11, plus 25. Okay, this is minus 22 plus 25. That tells me that y equals 3, right? And there's my final answer, 11, 3. These are fairly long and involved problems. If you don't write gigantically like I do, which I do so that you can see, um, it should take you half a page. That's still a lot, you guys. That's a lot of work. And I want you to appreciate that as we go farther into algebra, our problems are gonna get longer and longer and longer. So whenever you do a problem like this, take a second to look at it and go, dang, I understand all of this. Look, I am doing a problem that is literally a page long or however long it is for you. And appreciate how smart you feel because you should feel smart because you are smart if you understand this and can follow along. All right, again, remember, I didn't worry about whether I was solving for X or Y. All I did was look for the variable that met my requirements and that drove the rest of the problem. I had no grand strategy. I just went with what I got. Okay, we're gonna be doing substitution for a long time. We're gonna use it a lot. And many students come to regard substitution as a dear old friend, much like a stuffed animal from your childhood that is just comforting and familiar and you'll kind of love it. So if you don't now, just trust me, it'll come later. Ready? 59 is now done. Yay, see you for lesson 60, bye.